Blimey. I'm off. What? What a funny intro. In this heat, you can f Okay, I'll do the intro outro, but then I'm out of here. It's baking. Hello! Oh, and welcome to Tweed's Garage, where in this video, we do some more work on the Bantam. Um, we work on the alternator and that, that sort of missing wire that we needed to find. So work on that, um, do a bit of carb cleaning, finish off buttoning up the loom in the headlight, and, um, and then we've got hold of a battery, so we'll pop that in and, uh, and then we'll see whether we get it running. So come on in, have a look. So we finished refurbing the switch, installed it back on the handlebars, ran the wire and loom through to the headlight and now we've connected it all up to the headlight and uh, into the switches and into the horn. So we're ready to put the headlight back on, button this all up and then move our attention further down the bike. So, headlight on. Uh, top, top, top. It's got top written on there as well. Put that on there. There we go. Parking light in, side light. Now I found you, this catches on this, this latch here, so you need to put it in at a slight angle and then twist it round behind it. In this case, put the speedo light in. Put it in slightly twisted so that when you straighten it up, the side light bulb misses the clamp. And then tighten up the clamp underneath, put it all in. There we go. Right, let's move on to the alternator. Okay, so the problem we got with the alternator is you should have three wires coming out of the loom for it, but it's only got two, and the other one's broken off down there. So we need to investigate that and, and run a new wire in. So we'll undo this four screws. Uh, hopefully four, there's a bit of silicon sealant in here. So it might be one missing here. Let's have a little look. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think somebody's used a silicon screw to hold that in. Right. Let's take the screws out. I've cracked them off already. Just check that they're going to come out. One, two, three. There we go. Oh yeah, silicon screw. So we've got yellow wire there. So we might just connect a new one in the in the loom here. Oh, a little grease nipple there as well. Might give the clutch a bit of a greasing. Yeah, that's tight. Okay, all right. Let's try and sort this wire out. As you can see, the uh, alternator is quite filthy in there, and uh, it is sort of dry. It runs dry in there. Um, shouldn't be any grease or oil in there apart from uh, where you grease the clutch. So I suspect the rear seal behind the rotor at the end of the crank is uh, is leaking slightly, it's got a slight leak on it. Um, so yeah, that that will need to be changed. Now yeah, I've got some insulation tape there as well, someone has been in it sometime. Okay. 
Right, you're in the way. I'll have a little look and see where they go. Okay, let's move this clamp. So we'll find out what's going on under here. There's a bare wire on the orange wire there. Yeah, oh, all the old varnish is coming off there. Oh, yeah, there we go. So the orange one's soldered onto this. The yellow wire, yellow soldered onto these windings. And the green disappears down there. Now I can replace the yellow one there. Maybe feed some heat shrinking down to cover these two connections there. Let's give it a bit of a clean. Give that a bit of a clean first. Right, see if we get the yellow wire out. Okay, unfortunately the green wire's broken off and that's wired down inside there. So I'm gonna to have to take the windings off and uh, rewire it on the bench. Another five minute job, taking 10 hours. But it looks like it could do with a bit of a clean in there, it looks a bit gritty, so might as well do it. Let's try a bit of welding wire to hook it out. That's it, watch it out. and sort this out. So I've given the stator a bit of a clean and a degreasing. Got rid of some of the grit and muck off of it. Um, I might put some insulation tape around the coils just to retain the uh, cardboard protectors for the coils there, stop them flapping about. So yeah, the orange one while it goes there, that's still attached. The green one goes here, joining these two pairs. And then the yellow one goes on here. So I've got to rewire it. So as correct colours go, I only got yellow wire in stock. But I um, recycled and took these two out of the old loom. And they're, they're perfectly all right, perfectly serviceable. So we'll use these and I'll replace the orange and the green and the yellow. So it's got all new wiring on it. Okay, I've uh, put fresh solder on these connections here and I've tinned up the uh, wires ready to go on, so we just solder them on. Um, there is arguments about <coughs> having solder connections on motorbikes and cars because they don't actually use solder connections on aircraft, they, they're always crimped connections because what happens is you get a stress point on the wire between the soldered solid piece of wire and the flexible unsoldered copper wire there. It sort of you get a fracture point there and uh, well this has actually proved it hasn't it because two of the wires have fallen off um, in service but it was soldered before so we'll have to solder it back on again so green one down here orange one here And then the original yellow one on here. There we go. So we'll add some heat shrink in to uh, protect the joint and add a little bit of support to the joint. Heat source. Okay, 
that'll do. Just lay them down there. As they cool down. Jobs are good. Just carried out a trial fit of the alternator ring, make sure all the spaces and that all go on and it fits and sits nicely, which it does. So I've just got to tidy it up a bit. I couldn't feed the new wires through the old sleeving. It was where it had gone hard and sort of shrunk. It was really difficult to get them through. But I had a bit of sleeving left over from that, um, the old switch loom, uh, which I replaced. So I've used this piece of sleeving, but a little bit short. So on the inside, I'm going to add another piece of heat shrink just to uh, protect it all, keep it all together. So I'll shrink that on. And then the next thing to do is remake this uh, little clamp here that unfortunately snapped, made from steel. Tried to open it up a little bit and it just sheared off. So cut myself a bit of brass and I'll put a bit of heat shrink sleeving on like that. Shrink that on, bend it to shape, drill the holes and uh, we'll have a new brass P-clip to go on there. Okay, one new P-clip, ready to go. And then last job to do is to uh, wrap some tape around these coils. Um, that one's still got some tape on it, but most of the others, oh, they're okay. But these ones, the tape's broken off, so we'll just run some insulation tape just to keep these bits of cardboard in place. There we go. One rewired alternator ring. Stick it back on the bike. So it appeared to be missing a spacer. Don't know where it went. Can't find it anywhere. Don't know whether it was in there or not. Um, so I'm going to make three new spacers and uh, three new washers. <laughs>
so the air gap between the rotor and the stator should be about 8 thou, 0.2 of a millimetre. So you do that with a feeler gauge all the way around between each protrusion from the stator, between the stator and the rotor. So you put a feeler gauge between there all the way around between the six positions. Um, it's a bit tight, so I think it will need some looking at. But just to check whether it's running, we'll uh, go with it for now and um, see if she runs. So, fit a nice new battery and it's got an inline fuse, so we can pop that in. Um, I haven't connected the alternator yet because I think I might be taking the engine out, so there's no point connecting it up yet. An electrical system is designed so the engine runs off of the battery rather than straight from the alternator. So yeah, we should be able to just run it and see if it fires up. So with the battery connected, we'll turn the ignition on on the switch and see if we've got a spark. I'll check the spark by using my uh, little market traders clamp that I've got. These uh, galvanized steel clamps are quite handy. Just drill a hole in it. I tapped it for a spark plug thread and then you can just screw a spark plug in clamp it onto a nerve point somewhere, connect up your HT lead and uh, kick away quite happily without worrying about having to electrocute yourself. So we've got a nice fat spark, let's see if she'll start. Nope, doesn't seem to want to start. So I think what we'll do is we'll drop the carburetor off and uh, strip it down, give it a clean and uh, check all the jet holes are all okay. And undo the two nuts and uh, slide the carb back and lean it over and sort of squeeze it out from the air tube and remove it from the engine. So we'll remove the, uh, undo the screws on the top Remove the slide and cables as a whole and just leave that to one side, being careful not to bend the needle and then take it to the workshop and check it over. Right, let's dig into this carburetor and see if there's any problems inside. Take the banjo off the bottom first. Come off okay, and there's a filter inside that. That looks all right, looks pretty clean. So I take the float ball off the bottom. And then we've got the float and then the needle jet, plastic one on here. All looks good. Bit of muck in there. We'll just give that a wipe out, clean that out. It doesn't look too bad. That should do for now. We have to keep an eye on these and these floats. The uh, ethanol can cause a problem with them. You can get what they call stay up floats. that are made of a different type of plastic and um, needle valves as well. With a little ethanol proof rubber seat on. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, that's fine. It's pretty clean. It's in pretty good condition actually. No furring up on the on the bottom of it. Inside all looks good. Just whip the jets out. Just check them quickly. Ah, there you go. That's probably the problem. So long since I've ridden one of the English bikes, I forgot about flooding the carburetor beforehand. That's what that little button is. Wally. Oh well, we'll give it a clean whilst we're in here. Right, 
blow this out, this is the main jet. It's all good. Crud there fell out from somewhere. Do the uh, prime jet. All looks good. I blow out. That's the idle adjust, that's the mixture adjust. I'll just take this out just to check it's not dirty behind it. What we'll do is we'll wind it up tight till it stops, count turns, off, and a quarter. Quarter. Quarter, half, right. Bit furry on the ends, just give it just clean that off. Okay, we'll pop it back in. All the way back up, quarter, or off a turn. Okay, my jet back in. Lift that up. <coughs> Primary jet in, or idle jet. Snip that up. Okay, reassemble the float. Make sure that's locked on around the needle valve. Around okay, box screws back in. There we go. Put the fuel in that back on. There we go. We'll pop it back on the bike. So the carburetor looks okay, so we pop that on the bike. So the first thing you do is put the slide back in, making sure that the groove on the slide lines up with the uh, indexing screw on the side, and then feed that in. And then the needle is loose, it moves around side to side. So you need to sort of pop your finger down through the inlet hole and uh, guide it into the main jet as you feed it down. And then with that done, we screw the cap back on, and then we can feed the carb back into the air filter inlet rubber hose and then slide it onto the studs and fix it back on with the nuts. Tightening it down snugly, but, but not too tight as to deform the uh, flange on the carburetor. So with that done, it's time to sort of see if it'll start. Let's give it another go. Wait till we flood it this time.
So there you go, she's running and sounding pretty good. And uh, yeah, she didn't run the next time I tried to start her. I think the trouble is, um, we had been sitting so long, there's probably oil and gunk hardened around the seals, just enough to give the crankcase a nice sort of bit of pressure in there, or a bit of vacuum in there, draw the fuel in. Um, but once it had run a bit and petrol washed through and cleaned it all out, yeah, ne next time I sort of kicked it over and kicked it over and kicked it over. And, uh, and the only way it will run is if you really flood it, it will run for a bit initially on the fuel that's just dropped in the crankcases and, and then it will just peter out. So uh, engine needs to come out um, for that reason. And then the other reason is the um, stator and the rotor, the, the gap on them, I did measure them, it's got a very tight spot. Now normally they say you go around on feeler gauges and you get a tight spot and then you move the uh, the, the stator around. Well, it, like, I said, it's, like I said, it does, doesn't move, it's a very tight fit in there. Um, but also that, that tight spot that you measure here it, it moves around, so you'll move the rotor around and the tight spot will be over here and then it'll be down here, which suggests to me the rotor is the issue, not the stator. So we need to look at that. I need to sort of bung it on the lathe, just sort of dial it in and just see if it's the outside of the rotor that's sort of out, out of round or, um, you know, if it's the hole in the centre, could be out around. Um, need to look at that. And then obviously these new crank seals, which I was going to do anyway. And as we're in there, might as well put a new set of bearings in the bottom end. I think the top end's okay. So new bearings on the crank, new seals, new get, new bearings in the gearbox and uh, pop it all back together, pop it back in and see if it improves it. Okay, so uh, yeah, and there's other little bits to work on. We'll be doing those videos coming down the line so uh yeah if you enjoyed the video hit the subscribe button and uh, give us a little like and i'll see you next time all right cheerio <sighs> right i'm gonna take my pants off <coughs> hello and welcome to tweed's garage where in this episode What do we do? We uh, have a look at the alternator on the, I was gonna say Riley then. Um, so what do we do?